so now what is your explanation for this your prophet is not mad so what he is Abdul do you have an answer your prophet is not mad two angels they came to him and they took from his chest shaitan dirt explain to us why Allah needed to do that plastic surgery to take the shaitan dirt from his chest and the Muslim knows we will go with the Muslims they say he is not mad okay he is not mad so what's wrong and Abdul what Allah here trying to fix the defect is shaitan a physical piece of blood we take it off and shaitan is gone hello Quran he say say he saw Gabriel well, I, you know yesterday I saw Gabriel too <laughs> I mean, you know, you see, they ask, they ask him, who is Jibreel? Who is the guy who is there? This is the Hil Kalbi. He said, no, this is Jibreel. Muhammad, he see the Hil Kalbi. Do you want me to show you the Hadith? He never saw Jibreel. He saw a guy. His name is the Hil Kalbi. He is very well known, handsome boy from Quraysh. And obviously, there was a relationship between Muhammad and the Hil Kalbi. So they ask him why. They want to ask him why this guy is late with you alone. So he, in order to give an excuse, because it's fishy, why this man is sitting with Muhammad alone until late at night? He said, this is Jibreel. Is that correct? <coughs> oh, let us see. <laughs> Do you see it? Do you see it? Dahil Kelby? Jibreel, he looked like Dahil Kelby. Why? Why, why, why? Why? Huh? Do you see it? The angel of Allah and Allah could not find a look of his angel except a, a look of a guy who look who live in the neighborhood and he is the most handsome boy. And obviously he and Muhammad they used to share their sex object together. Why? Any Abdul? Send him an angel in this in the look of a man, good looking man, no problem. But why in the in the look of the Hil Kalbi? Let me find you. Here we go. Guys, read with me. Does it say that? Or I'm making things up? Read with me. Read with me. Read with me. La 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 la. Oof, that's deep. A lot of knowledge there. This is Sahih. This is what? This is Sahih. Don't tell me it's weak. That was Jibreel, peace upon him, upon you, who came down in the form of Dahya Kalbi. Do you see it? Abdul, do you see it? Why Jibreel, he come in the look of a guy, he always stay in the house of Muhammad, he is a very well-known person, he is one of the com a close companion to Muhammad, obviously there's a relationship between them. 
he could not find the other person look so he cloned the hyal kalbi why so now we see the hyal kalbi in the street we would think this is jibreel <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> oh. You know, first time they found Monica Lewinsky in the in the office of Billy Clinton so late, he said, This is not Monica, this is Jabril. He came in the image of Monica. <laughs> oh boy. Jabril, huh? This is Jabril. No, must be true story. Huh? What is that? Who is a Muslim would like to call us? Call me in the look of Jibreel, in the look of the hell. Tell me, I don't care. Show me what's happening. Why Allah, he made the plastic surgery for the Prophet. Why the plastic surgery was a must and needed it twice. Well, Allah, he made two surgeries. He made two surgeries for Muhammad. Once when he was young and once which means he was a child and once when he was a man why the first surgery was not successful hmm? why any abdul Allah, he made a surgery for Muhammad when he was a child. He took a clot from his chest. And that supposedly the clot will make him shaitan free. So why the Quran says later after Muhammad, he became a prophet, that shaitan he throw in his mouth. Satanic verses. So what the benefit of this surgery? Huh? My my Skype is open. Who said my Skype is not open? It is open. Nobody is calling. Don't worry. Be happy. Muslims only call me after after I I uh, I log off, <laughs> and they leave me a message says to me, "You are a piece of a crab, garbage." No, cowards. I am online. My Skype is on. Call me. You do not need to add me. Just give me a call. Give me a call, and Allah will give you all the versions He promised you. <clears throat> no, I call your prophet. I'm not the one who is calling your prophet a crazy. It's your God calling Muhammad crazy. Hold on, hold on. You see, the Quran says that Muhammad was accused by his family and his tribe that he is a crazy. Do you agree? Do you agree, Mr. What's your name? Murtaki. Murtaki. Did the family of Muhammad accuse him that he is a crazy? Yes or no? Yes, right? The Quran mentioned that six times about Muhammad. Actually, more. But uh, as I know that his family, like tribe the of Quraysh, they spoke of him as, as a crazy man, I think, six times. So, you are a crazy. And they said that to Muhammad. But, you know, let me ask you a question. If somebody, he say, that I had sex with my wives, but in fact, he was imagining. Do you think this is a sign of him being crazy or not? What do you think? If a person, he came to marry your daughter, be honest. Huh? And then he is already married. He has two or three wives. You know, a Muslim, he had the right to marry four women, as you know. Okay. So three of his wives, they say, that our husband, the one who was going to marry your daughter, he imagined himself having sex, but in fact he did not. What do you will say? You will say he's crazy, don't you? Well, give me, give me a title. What you will call him? 
what you will call him any abdul <clears throat> Hello? Taking hashish, maybe? And you see, I'm not judging because they call him crazy. I'm judging because what the story says, the proof it was that uh, he's crazy. And Allah, Allah, he confirmed to Muhammad in chapter 52, verse number 29, <clears throat> that you know what, you are not a crazy. Why I'll need to confirm that to Muhammad? Now let me show you something to prove that Muhammad is crazy. Hold on. If we go here, we will have a clear evidence that Muhammad was a crazy man. Uh, no, not this website. Hold on. Let us go to the hadith. Where is the hadith? Uh, okay, here. If I ask you right now that there is somebody I know he tried to commit suicide many times, what do you think that is a as a behavior? Is that a crazy behavior or a behavior of somebody is a stable? What do you think? Any Muslim want to answer? Is it true that the hadith says that the Prophet of Islam he tried to commit suicide many times? Read with me, please. But after a few days, Waraka died, and the divine inspiration was posed. Why it was posed? What Waraka have to do with Allah? Obviously, Muhammad was copying from a book of Waraka. For a while, why? For a while, the Prophet becomes so sad, as we have heard, that he intended several times. How, how many? Several times. How, how many? Several times. The, the reason I'm repeating, because the Muslims are so slow, excuse me. To throw himself from the top of the high mountains and every time he went to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down Jibreel would appear in front of him and he speak to him as a brother Zakir Naik and he said to him brother brother sister when a brother Warakad Nufal, he died, the Prophet became so sad. It's very normal. Because the relationship between the Prophet Muhammad, peace of him, وسلم, and Walaka, because it was like, like this. No, no, not like that. Like, like, this, like this. Look, look at this. Yeah, like that. So the Prophet became so sad. And he decided to go to the high mountain. The reason he decided to go to the high mountain, because first of all, he was trying to practice some kind of science. He fly. He experienced flying and he can come down with some theory like about how to make an airplane example So the Prophet he went to the top of the mountain and he decided to throw himself However, he could not do it. Why because Allah don't want him to do it Otherwise, we will know how to make airplanes long time ago So the Prophet he went to the top of the mountain each time he tried to do that the end of the breeze bit upon him He appeared in front of him and he said to him Khabibi Muhammad Khabibi Muhammad don't do it Muhammad Habibi you are a trolley the messenger of Allah are you stupid Muhammad don't do it Muhammad you are a truly a prophet of Allah don't you notice like what the heck the angel appear in front of him and he say to him don't do it for sure you are truly 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 the prophet of Allah is that mean Muhammad was trying to commit suicide because he himself don't believe is a prophet of Allah obviously yes 
what the angel appeared before him and say read with me oh mommy oh mommy muhammadi you are indeed a messenger oh mommy 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 oh mommy mommy blue muhammad crazy so then after he said to him indeed 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 brother you are a messenger muhammad he cooled down wow whereupon in his heart would become quiet and he would come down and return home so what the plastic surgery did muhammad after the plastic surgery is still an idiot you see when the hadith says that allah he made a surgery for muhammad what is the difference between Muhammad before the surgery and Muhammad after the surgery? Nothing changed. Why somebody is a prophet of God trying to commit suicide many times? Unless he is a madman. Look, the Muslims, they are not, there's no text no more in the text. Look, the text is dead. The Muslim now they play dead. The Abdul, are you there? I fear there are looks on your locks on my heart. Let me show you how stupid you are. Don't you say that, don't you know that Allah is the one who put the locks in our heart? Guys, I want to show you how stupid the Abdul. Look what this guy he said. Look, 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 look what he said. Look, 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 look. I mean, every Muslim is a donkey until he proved the opposite. I'm not insulting, I mean it. They have no idea what is written in their book. Do you see what this guy is saying? I'm showing you that, that chat. I fear, brother, you are you, you, there is a lox on your heart, and the shaitan has deceived you, people. Not as carefully what he said, he said, the shaitan. What if I show you that the one who deceived us is Allah and the one who put heart in our or luck in our heart is Allah? Let me show you, Abdul. In a second, you will be sorry for what you said. Dump, Muslim. Dump. Let us go here. The Quran said that it is Allah who put a lock in our heart. Yes. And he is the one who deceived us. And he just admitted that the one who do that is shaitan. Do you believe it? Do you see it? Chapter 2, verse number 7. This is why I say every Muslim is a stupid until he proved the opposite. Allah has sealed their hearing and their heart and their eyes. <laughs> so why you are saying shaitan, he sealed our heart. When the fact it is Allah according to your book. Hello? Hello? It is you you're looking for. This is why, my friend, I called my my first book. It's called The Deception of Allah. Why I call it The Deception of Allah? Because the Quran saying with many verses that Allah, he deceive us. This is how stupid this religion. The Muslim believe that Allah is the one who like our heart. He deceived us. He misguided us. He like he he caused us to go in error and misguided, and then he will judge us for his decision. Not only that, the Muslims believe that Allah, before He created us, He decided our sin. If you remember, when Adam, you want to get my book, Abdul, go to Amazon.com and search for a Christian Prince. You will see the list of my books. I am the nightmare of Islam and nobody can debate me and if they do they will be sorry
according to Muhammad, that there was a debate between Musa's and who? And Adam. Musa's, he said to Adam, because of you, we are out of heaven. Because of what? Because of you. What does that mean? Musa's is a, obviously he believed in the original sin, and that's clear evident that Musa's cannot be a Muslim. The Muslim they say to us that the first stupid thing the Christian believe in is to believe in original sin. Islam refused original sin, and as you see, this is Musa. Musa's the Muslim, huh? Believe in original sin because this debate happened after he died, not before. <laughs> As you know, Moses and Adam never met. There's long period before be between Adam and Moses. So where they met supposedly in heaven. So look, look what it says. <clears throat> all those hadith are sahih. All of them. The prophet said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Oof. Oof. I mean, things is getting serious here. Things is really messed up. Two prophets are debating because Adam, remember, he is a prophet for the Muslims. He was a prophet for his wife. You believe it? Anyway. <clears throat> so, Moses, he said to Adam, Oh, Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Then Adam said to him, O Musa's Habibi Musa's, Allah favored you with his talk. He talked to you directly, directly, and he wrote the Torah for you in your hand with his hands. Do you blame me for action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before he cre my, my creation? What the heck? The sin of Adam is not the sin of Adam. It is the sin of Allah. And look, Muhammad here, he takes the side of Adam. He says, so Adam confuted Moses. Adam, he is the winner. So the, 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 what Muhammad is saying, that the argument of Moses was weak, stupid. The argument of Adam was the winner. So what is the winner saying? That Allah, he wrote the sin and the fate of Adam 40 years before his creation. So you cannot blame Adam for the sin of Adam for this is what is written by Allah. So why Allah punishing us? Have you ever seen more stupid religion like this? Why Allah kicked Moses from heaven if he is the one who wrote for him his fate 40 years before he created them? And Muhammad, he agreed, we cannot blame Adam for his sin. For this was his law, what was his, his, his fate. And you are telling me Muhammad is not a crazy man. So either he, he is a liar and he is a crazy in the same time. He lie about this debate. There is no such a people they met. Where they met? Explain to me how Adam and Moses they met. Where? In the city hall? Did Allah take Adam from the grave yet? According to Muhammad, in different hadith, he said, he is the first one Allah will resurrect from the grave. So what Muhammad, what, what, what Muhammad is talking about? What Adam and Moses doing there? If Muhammad is the first one to be resurrected from the grave, What this guy is talking about however the important for us about this is story that Musa's believe in the original sin and that is against what Islam is about and this is after his death and now Musa's in heaven blaming Adam for what happened and Adam he don't believe that even he commits sin for this was the sin of Allah and he was right according to Muhammad
and you are telling me that Muhammad is not a stupid madman so why he told you go and do Hajj and do Salat and go visit the Kaaba kiss the black stone if at the end of the day this is all will not do any different what is the point of this if my sin is written for me before I am created 40 years before my creation why I want to be a believer in Islam and why I want to worship Allah because it is written already you know if you remember there was there was a, a child who is an infant he died and he is a Muslim child which means a son of Muslim man Muslim remember Muhammad he said everyone is born as a Muslim anyway <laughs> even you and me we are born as Muslims according to Muhammad so a child he was he passed away Aisha, she said that this is a child he is happiness for him he will go to heaven Muhammad he said to her don't say that you idiot for Allah created for hellfire the dwellers of the hellfire and for those to paradise the same which means even though he is a child of a Muslim family even though he is born as a Muslim, as Muhammad claimed, for every child is born as a Muslim. Even though he never commits sin. Even though he never reached the age of sin. Yet Muhammad, he, uh, he believed that this is child, still it is possible he will go to hell. And as you see, this is the Sahih Hadith in the front of you. This is Sahih Muslim. And this is Sahih Muslim. And this is Sunan al Nisa'i. And this is Ibn Majah. And this is Al Bukhari. I mean, read it. Uh, this one is different. Hold on. Actually, here the story is about the child who they, they cut his head. You remember that story? This is a different story. We'll talk about it now, later. So this child, he did not do any sin yet. He did not even reach the age, the age of doing sin. Yet, according to your prophet, it is high possible that he might go to hell or it might go to heaven because Allah, he created for hell, people of hell, before he created them. <laughs> so the whole, the whole idea of not committing sin in Islam to go to heaven is a lie. This is a child. He is a child of a Muslim. He is born from a Muslim family. Muhammad claimed that everyone is born as a Muslim. He never commits sin. He is an infant. Why it is possible he will go to hell? Give me a reason. Any Muslim can tell us? So this is the wisdom of Muhammad after the plastic surgery and after they install in his chest a dish of wisdom. Do you see how much wise he is? I mean, this is a hell of wisdom. <clears throat> huh? This is a prophet of God? And this is a wisdom of a prophet of God. That a child who never commits sin, he might go to hell. Jesus says the opposite. Jesus, he said, if you don't turn to be the same as those children, you are not worth of entering my kingdom. So the idea of, of a Christ of justice is clear that you have to have a heart of a, a child person who loves everybody. Who is not doing wrong because he is intentionally trying to do wrong, but he have a he have a good heart. He's a child. He's innocent. So, your prophet saying that a child he will go to hell. It doesn't matter if you commit sin or not. Actually, in different hadith, Muhammad he said that if you don't commit sin, all people. If you don't commit sin, Allah is going to wipe you out. With people who commit sin, He will destroy you. He will what? 
he will destroy us why because we did not commit sin what <laughs> are you serious yes this is what Muhammad said if you don't commit sin Allah will destroy you and replace you why one day the messenger of Allah SAW recited this ayah and if you turn away he will replace you with other people then they will be they will not be like you why Allah will replace us because you need to commit sin and you need to ask for forgiveness what's wrong with this God do we have any Muslim would like to call us any Muslim would like to make our night exciting who is going to show us that we are ignorant about Islam who is the Muslim want to teach us the wisdom the beautiful Prophet you see the reason by the way Muslims they cannot debate me because but this is just between me and you I I you know I install a dish of knowledge and wisdom in my chest but just this is between us okay so a Muslim when he come here he said to himself this guy is going to be the hell of me I don't know where he got his dish of wisdom from a prophet of God he got a dish of wisdom what and not only a dish of wisdom a dish of faith huh <laughs> what since when faith is something to install I can install faith I bring a dish with me full of faith this is what God do this is how Allah he guides somebody to Islam he he sent his angel he cut his chest and he installed a dish of faith and a dish of wisdom or oh, this is a stupid statement Muhammad he said huh actually there's a hadith let me see if I can find it uh, you know the angel he hold his uh, what what they call the finger the the, the toes the toes the, the the finger the big the the thick finger in your uh, uh, in your foot hold on <clears throat> let me see if i can find it oh boy i mean this hadith is full of fingers but this is not the one I'm looking for. Now let us see. <laughs> I don't really know. Yeah, the problem here, this website is really stupid. I mean, you search for something, you find a lot of, uh, uh, yeah. You find a lot of stupid things. Uh, maybe it's not here in this website. So the angel he hold him from his toes or his toe. I mean, what's why he hold him from there? So he cut his chest. He installed a dish of wisdom. He installed a dish of faith, and then he hold his toes. What? Hello? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, 
let me show you the the hadith where Muhammad he had the plastic surgery when he was a man we showed you the one when he was a child this is when Muhammad was a man the messenger of Allah s a w s said the roof of my house was made open while I was in Mecca on the night of Miraj and Jibreel descended he opened my chest and washed it with Zamzam the water of Zamzam true story then he brought the golden tray full of wisdom and belief and he pured it in my chest and then he closed it I'm so glad that he closed it I mean imagine the chest of Muhammad is still open exposing the knowledge he have to all the flies in the neighborhood I mean that would be horrible and he took hold of my hand and scanned it to the nearest heaven I thought he took you with that flying donkey you see the story here is different where is the donkey here he he forgot about the donkey totally the flying mule so Muslims what happened now Muhammad after the surgery what he exactly he become what the point of this surgery The finger of the feet is called the toes. Yeah, oh, thank you. I think you guys, you have a very long delay, huh? Any Abdul, wanna tell us what's happening? Who is going to call us? Who is a Muslim? He is going to witness for us that is a true it is a true that angels of God they make surgery for a prophet and they install in their chest wisdom and faith hmm? so why you Muslim you say to us that Allah is almighty he can say be is going to be and why Allah he needed to do the surgery twice once when he was a child and once when he was a man the one in front of you when he was a man hmm? guys do you think when I was a child my parents they did a surgery for me I'm you know I, I start being suspicious about this because I'm wondering where I got all this from I was number one in my classroom by the way I was the only student in my classroom mm -hmm. this is why I was number one in my classroom I mean I don't know why people are laughing I mean show respect please please show respect Okay, hold on, hold on. I will give you an example. Okay, don't, don't, don't lie. Don't, don't. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I was number one in my classroom, and I was the only student because I was a very good behavior student. To the point, they give me a classroom alone. The teachers there too. Isn't the Quran says in one of the chapters that Allah is the best of the creators? If Allah is the only creator how he can be the best of the creators <laughs> so my friend i was the best in my classroom and i was the only student so show respect please it's obvious he is the only creator but yet he is the best of the creators <laughs> i'm really all about this madness he is the only creator and the Muslim this right away they start explaining to you they say to you okay don't you hear about the one who created Microsoft what, what? yeah the one who created Microsoft okay what about the one who created the core okay hold on, hold on 
the creation of Allah is compared to the one who created a car so Allah is saying that he is the best compared to Bill Gates so we have now Bill Gates is God and Allah is God but Allah is the best God who can create better the religious term of a creation is about giving a life because the Quran says clearly what it's meant to be a creator Allah in the Quran he said that are you going to worship someone who cannot create a fly so obviously Allah did not say are you going to worship somebody he can make a, a hammer uh, a shuffle uh, create a, you know a bicycle he said are you going to create some are you going to worship someone or a god who create not even a fly so obviously the creation in the Quran and in Islamic religion and actually you know it's about creating life and here we go the example in front of your eyes yeah those who you worship by beside Allah or except instead of Allah they, they cannot they don't create the fly do you see it Abdul so when Allah he say he is the best of the creators he is confirming that this is about a creation and he is saying to you if you want to worship somebody to consider him as a God at least let him create a fly not a bicycle not a bed not a shelf not a building so if they are able or capable of creating a fly then okay worship them do you see it now according to your Quran my friend Muslims your Quran says that Jesus he created from the mud a bird you want to tell me that this is by the leaf of leave of uh, Allah or not it doesn't matter it doesn't matter he is a creator he created from the mud the bird you want to say to me that the Quran is saying that Allah he gave him that power it doesn't matter first of all there's no proof that Allah gave anything because obviously Allah he can do nothing the the, the, the Arab they keep asking Muhammad for a miracle and he cannot do any any miracle and look what Muhammad he did when they keep asking him for a miracle Muhammad he to get to run away from making miracles he said this uh, <clears throat> that we refrain from what make us refrain from sending miracles but that the former generation before you chapter 17 verse 59 they refused to believe in them so Allah is saying clearly he refrained from sending miracle to Muhammad so why must they lie and they say the Quran and science uh, I saw an article about Muhammad. He he said to the rain, come down. The rain start coming. Muhammad said, the rain stop. The rain stop. If 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 that's deep. So what this is here about? We refrain from sending signs. Only because only. Do you see why? Guys, does it say there only? Does it say there only? Only because the men of former generations treated them as false that's that's a true lie <laughs> because the jews believe in the miracles of moses and the miracles of the prophets and many of the jews they believe in the miracle of jesus and they became a christian actually all the apostles of jesus are jews all of them so what do you mean they refuse to believe in them why jesus did not say I refrain from giving you miracles because you refuse the miracles of a prophet came before why Moses did not say the same why Isaiah did not say the same why all the prophet did not say that the she camel is a she and she is a camel <laughs> and she was a rock Allah he gave a prophet his name is Saleh Saleh he told his followers believe in Allah 
So his followers, they said, okay, 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 Abdul, Allah, Saleh, hold, listen. If your God Allah can, you see that rock? You see that rock there? Okay, if your Allah can make that rock, get a bread net and deliver a she camel, and this she camel, she have to be bread net with 10 year, 10 month she camel. Like, what the heck? Then we will believe in you. <laughs> True story. Oh boy, too much hashish. Too much hashish. Guys, do you know that the word hashish is coming from the Muslims? Do you know that? That the word hashish is coming from the Muslims? Who knows what, uh, you know, I, I told you before what, uh, what the word hashish is coming from. Anyone remember? There's one of the Ismaili sect founder. His name is Hassan al-Hashash. Hassan al-Hashash, he was a rich man. And he was the first person known as the assassinator. This is where the word assassin coming from. For he is the one who established what is called the assassin system. So, so this guy, <coughs> uh, he built a castle and he was wealthy and he bring poor people to his castle free food free sex he have a beautiful woman just sleep with anyone you want open sex drink eat meat food whatever you want fruit really like like the heaven of muhammad you just bring your penis with you then after six months or a year Every, you know, uh, uh, beside the sex, uh, Al Hashash or Hassan, he used to do like, uh, let us say, uh, a meditation time. So he sit with them and he teach them. All right. So anyway, after six months or one year, Al Hashash he will choose or one of his masters, they will choose one of those who they are attending the castle for free, who is there for long enough, and they will say to him. You don't come back unless you go and assassinate such a person. And that person usually is a person who refused to pay Al-Hashash money. So Al-Hashash he sent to a prince or a king or a ruler. He sent him a letter saying to him, by the end of this month, I want, let us say, 30,000 pieces of gold delivered to me or else. So the prince to avoid getting killed by the assassin army because his army is an army of assassin he paid the money and the one who don't Hassan al Hashash he sent one of his men which is very hard to know who is he for he is just a civilian he doesn't see an army so the ruler he will be walking in the town you know all days like cities are small not like now you know you have a lot of guards and things is very simple so the guy he will be walking between his guards few guards and the guy will jump on him and he will put his knife in his chest now those guys are suicider so because they want to go back they are under influence of drugs they want to go back to the drugs and sex so he was willing to do anything even if it's a crazy so this guy he became number one scary person in the Middle East and actually he start building castles all the way from Iran all the way to the seashore in Syria and those are today is called the Ismaili sect all right and this is where the word assassin is coming from from this guy now his last name is Al Hashash which means hash hash for he is a person who provide hashish for whoever enter his castle for free and I see that al hashash is a smart person but evil and he was the same as Muhammad the difference between Muhammad and al hashash that al hashash is more truthful he gave what he promised he give you women, sex, hashish. Muhammad, he promised you things you will get after. <laughs> so the poor Abdul, he got nothing. 
but al hashash he give you what he promised he have women he have alcohol food totally free it's heaven but this is a real one yeah the ismaili you know we, we they are called the ismaili you know uh their i think their their leader now he live in canada his name is uh Khan something and the Canadian they praise him very much in the government in Canada they use him like they they suppose they speak about them as Muslim but those are not by the way those are not really uh, let us say they are far away from anything to do with uh, Muhammad uh, they call them the other name they call them they call them al Bataniyin, which mean uh, they believe the Quran have outside and inside the inner so al Hashash he brought those Muslims to his castle and he taught them that the Quran have an inner meaning and we go by the inner not but the ice outside you know let's say he is a smart person who was able to control a huge number of people in his time and he was able to extend and establish actually a very long uh, um, territory under his control you know <clears throat> we go back to our topic at least al hashash allah did not open his chest and in install a dish of wisdom period he was more real you know this guy was more real he is not a fiction person Do we have any Abdul here? Well, yeah, you know, you if you search for the the, the Ismaili sect, <clears throat> you will find their leader is very rich. Okay, let us see. Hold on. <clears throat> uh, let me find you his name. There is many many sect those are considered as part of the Shia they are more close to the Shia than others you know <coughs> um. so mostly they are considered as Shia And the reason they call them uh, the Ismaili because they, they claim that they belong to Ishmael, the grandson or the grand grandson of Muhammad, you know. So they claim that this is where they are coming from. Uh, I forgot the name of their leader today. His name is uh, Agha Khan, Agha something. He's very rich in, in Canada. He owned a TV station. He owned a big center. Um, hold on. All right. Let us see. This is not Ahmadiyya. This is not Ahmadiyya. Here we go. His name is a Prince Karim Agha Khan. Prince Karim Agha Khan. Let us search his name in the front of you. Here we go. This is their leader. 
is a very wealthy rich uh, CM Murad want, wants Prince Karim al Khan to visit Karachi annual <laughs> anyway this is what happened when you are very filthy rich even if you are Shia uh, or a sect they welcome you for your money uh, <clears throat> this is the guy we are talking about and I think now he live in Canada uh, and he have a lot of investments in the West you know he is one of the world richest men with estimate of 800 million dollar all right uh, however you know the important about him that he is a leader of the ismaili now by the way the ismaili are not really let us say we cannot compare them to the muslims i met many of them uh, their women they don't wear hijab uh, their skirt is shorter than my finger uh, they drink wine more than water uh, they don't give a damn for Allah and Muhammad is their shish kebab and they make fun of the Quran and they make fun of the Sunni and they make fun of Al-Bukhari and let us say they are out they are considered as Muslims but they have nothing to do with Islam anymore this is why the Muslims they hate them very much actually and just to add to this during the crusade the uh, the Ismaili the Ismaili because they were fought by almost all the Muslims they were considered as you know let's say uh, friends for the crusade all right <clears throat> yeah but my finger is so long I mean come on don't take it wrong my finger is the skirt is shorter than my finger but then you know how tall my finger is come on <laughs> anyway all right now do we have any Muslim here <laughs> They are considered by name as Muslims, but I don't see anything about them as Muslims. As I said, they don't go to mosque, they don't pray, they don't fast, uh, they drink, uh, uh, you know, and the uh, their women is very free. They don't wear hijab. Uh, I mean, you want to call them Muslim, call them Muslim, but they have nothing to do with Islam. Now, I don't know about them in different countries like those who live in Pakistan, etc. But this is what I know about the Ismaili that they have really, they are, that they are not the same as the Shia, even though they are considered as a sect of the Shia. They have nothing to do with the Sunni, they have nothing to do with anyone. You know? Yeah. Any Abdul here? Look, look at this. His Highness. His Highness, you know, I, I remember there was a, <clears throat> once I visited. Uh, he's a kid, actually. You know, like we were like teenage, so he told me to go and visit, uh, visit him in his farm, in the village. Uh, so I went with him to his farm, and we went. We when we arrived to the farm, whoever we meet in the street, they bend down to this guy. And I was saying, like, what is that? Is that a joke? He said, you do not know who I am? I said, no. Who are you, you idiot? <laughs> Honest to God, I said to him, who are you, you idiot? You know, this guy is very, like, he's funny. He looks funny. He's a chubby, you know, fat, uh, you know, short. So, like, why they are bending down to this guy? And he told, he told me, my grandfather is the light. I said, who? Your, your grandfather is who? He said, my grandfather is the light. So who is your grandfather who is the light? And uh, this is the first time I hear about this group. And later I found out that this guy, his grandfather truly, he was called the light. And he is the head of an Islamic sect, and they worship him. 
so he is the grandson so they believe he is holy and those people his family didn't work money come from everywhere so like let us say your wife she is not getting bread net what do you do you you promise God that if your wife get a bread net you will deliver the nation to the like the son of the, the, the you know of this guy that's because the leader is dead already long time ago so you deliver it to the uh, you know the same as this guy but this is a different sect you deliver it to them and this is why they get a lot of money every month from everywhere they didn't know even what to do with it and he told me that uh, his uh, his uncle he have an agreement with furniture companies and electronic comp companies and uh, property companies because a lot of things come in and he cannot why he can have them so what they do so they have a contract let us say with electric company you buy let us say uh, you make a promise you will buy the the prince a big tv all right they deliver the tv right away 